Good morning. Welcome to Christ Our Anchor Presbyterian Church. I'm Pastor Jesse, and I'm so glad every one of you is here today. And also, if you're with us online, we're glad you're here and a part of us. I do want to give a special thank you to Susan Storm for filling in and playing beautiful piano while Diana is on much-deserved vacation away. Thank you. And I also want to give you all a heads up that I will be out this coming week because I'm having surgery on my face tomorrow to try to help prevent all this voice loss and head colds and the like. So prayers welcomed, but I will be out this week. And if there are any urgent pastoral care needs, please contact the church office because Pastor Dottie will be covering some of those and we can also uh, deploy some of our wonderful deacons and all. So I will be in town, but out of commission and I welcome your prayers. Um, I also, one more thank you to the deacons and folks who showed up to help for our great fire pit night. We had so much fun on Thursday. It, it was actually probably the coolest of all the hot weather we had last week, and we had a really nice time. Here's an example. Thank you very much, Anna, for showing cute pictures. Um, but the next one is going to be on August 8th, weather permitting, and it's just letting the kids play, giving out ice cream and hot dogs and s'mores, and grown-ups get to talk to each other and get to know each other better. So join us for the next one of those. Um, next Sunday, I can't believe it's already late July, next Sunday I will be here present in worship but not preaching. My good friend Christy will be coming as our guest preacher, and you all have heard from her before. She's wonderful. And I hope that you will come in person. I'm going to be here because we're going to be celebrating our wonderful Walter Kolsch after the service. And those of you who are helping to plan our celebration of him, let's just huddle. If you're interested in helping with that, let's huddle after the service and just touch base because we really want this to be a special tribute to him. He's moving up to New Jersey, and he has been so integral in the life of this church. So we want to really honor him next week. And then the last announcement from me is that we have our July VBS meeting on J Sunday the 28th from 3 to 6. We will provide dinner, if that helps parents. Anybody is welcome, kids of any age. We have things to do even down to the toddlers. And it's a really nice family fellowship time because we move through stations together. We learn and play and grow together. So that's Sunday the 28th. The theme is Compassion Camp. It's been really fun, and we hope you'll join us for that. Oh, and one more thing is that... Um, you all may have seen the slide with the July worship schedule, but in the bulletin, I didn't catch this till today, um, it's flipped. So next week, the band will be playing, and the 28th will be the traditional service. So I just wanted to make sure you knew the band is next week. The uh, Whatever we can get of the choir is on the 28th. Am I missing any other announcements? Well, let us continue to worship together. Morning, everyone. So please join responsibly in the opening prayer. We have gathered in God's holy presence, the one who etches grace on all our hearts. This is the place where God will transform us into disciples. We glorify our God who yearns for justice, not just for a favored few, but for the least of our world. This is the place where God will write compassion on our souls. We give thanks to God for unceasing grace. We remember God's persistence in saving us. This is the place where God will read the word into our lives. Thanks be to God.
Our first scripture reading is from Psalm 126. When, when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. I would like to invite any children who want to come down front and sit with me to come join me down here. Hello, lovely friends. Hello, hello. And if you're watching online, I love to hear who's watching, where they're watching from. So tell us you're there. Hi, Michael. Hi, Valerie. Hi, Victoria and Maisie and Ella and Ivy. Hi, guys. You look so pretty. You know, I did not put on my pretty dress today. Oh. I know, why not? Do you guys remember, what have we been talking about in church these last couple of months? What have we been talking about, Maisie, do you remember? Emotions, exactly. So our feelings, our emotions, all the things we feel inside. I wanna ask you guys, when you think of all the different feelings, which one is your favorite emotion? What's the best one to feel for you? What do you think, Michael? Happy? Yeah, would you guys agree with that? Do you, or do you like feeling afraid or mad or sad better than feeling happy? No. We would all probably say joy is our favorite, right? But like, what do we mean by happiness and joy? What does happiness look like? Like, show me a happy face. Right? <laughs> oh, I wish I had my camera. What else does happiness look like? What do you think? Laughter? Absolutely. That's a good one because it's like, what does it sound like and look like? What might you do if you're feeling joy? Smile, absolutely. Sometimes you see people like at sports games and things, they'll be giving high fives and hugs, right? They'll be cheering. What else can you think of? What does it look like? You cheer for Ella. Do you feel joy when she does great with her sports? That's so nice. That is so nice. Well, I want to ask you guys, how do you think joy is maybe different from happiness? Because we're gonna talk about that with the grown-ups, but you can give us a preview. Do you think those things are different? Here's a hint, I'm gonna tell you that they are later. But how do you think joy is different than happiness? I love that, Victoria. Joy is even happier than happiness. And do you know why? Because being happy is based on stuff that can change. So like if you're happy that your team won or if you're happy that you get to stay up late tonight or you're happy that school's out for summer, right? But joy comes from something deeper. Joy comes from those things that don't change. So it's like the love that your family and your friends have for you, the love that God has for you. How many of you guys feel joy when you walk through the doors of COA? Let me see your happy faces, right? Oh, yeah, give someone a high five. That's right. That's right. We feel joy when we come here because we feel loved. Those are the things that can bring us joy. And that's why we show up week after week to church, because we are trying to feed our joy in those things that cannot change. So let's say a prayer together as we think about this emotion today. God, we thank you so much that you made us people to have all kinds of feelings. But we thank you that we have the ability to feel joy, that you give us people who love us, that you are in our lives and that your love and presence never changes. And we pray that you would help us to seek the joy every day of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Great listening, you guys. Thank you so much.
Thank you again, Susan. Our second scripture reading is one that Susan and I agree is among a favorite for Christians, and it is from Paul's letter to the Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 8. Listen for the word of the Lord in your life today. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With that great advice from Paul, let's take a moment of silence to think about such things and to notice how God is present today. Amen. I'm going to start, as I often do, with a quick question. By show of hands, how many of you have ever ridden a zip line? Oh, there's quite a lot of you. Wow, some adventurers in our church. All right. It's thrilling, right? You usually have to leap off of a high platform, and then you go flying down this line into the woods or some other beautiful scenery. It's great, right? But just imagine... (laughs) If that line you were flying down had a huge tangled knot in it, right? That would stop you in your tracks. That would stop the fun and even be very dangerous to stop suddenly like that. And I want to submit to all of you that our unprocessed emotions in our lives are like a knot in a zip line, meaning they have the potential to jolt us to a stop and even to harm us if we don't untangle them, if we don't work them through. One of our early American preachers, Jonathan Edwards, was a man who taught that true religion consists of what he calls rightly ordered, holy affections. So meaning our deepest emotions are a part of true religion because they influence our motivations and our actions and our entire lives. This is what we've been doing all summer so far in this sermon series, trying to untangle the complicated feelings that we live with and maybe to rightly order them a little bit, even repurpose them for the good of the world. Using inspiration from the kids' movie Inside Out, we've thought together now about fear, anger, envy, sadness, disgust, and this week, we come to an emotion that we all think is the best, joy. (laughs) Did you all know that since the year 2013, March 20th has been deemed the International Day of Happiness by the United Nations? Since 2013, human beings from all over the world and all different walks of life have happiness as a fundamental goal. And let me ask you here, You can go like this if you want, but do you consider yourself a happy person? Eh, Give or take, right? Right? I know I used to consider myself a very happy person. I was very bubbly and carefree as a teenager and as a young adult before a lot of real life concerns set in and started to hit me. And I still do think I'm a pretty happy person, but I think we absolutely have to draw a contrast between what we call happiness and what we call joy. Our culture in America has actually decreased very much in what we think of as happiness. But we continue to be one of the smiliest peoples on the face of the earth. Did you know that? Isn't that interesting? To the point that it is unnerving to other cultures and maybe even seen as dishonest, right? And maybe it is a little dishonest because looking happy is different than having joy. 
Happiness is certainly a huge part of joy, those moments where you're just laughing till your stomach hurts, where you feel free enough to dance or play or be silly. That's all a part of joy, but joy goes a step farther. I love what Victoria said. Joy is happier than happiness. Someone could be filled with joy, but not be smiling or dancing at all. They might be joyful even while they go through a very difficult time. I know that my aunts all said that they felt something like joy when they held the hands of my 90-year-old grandmother as she took her last breath. Because they knew this was a moment that they was, it was so significant they would hold on to it for the rest of their lives. It was a God-filled moment, a strangely joyful moment. They all said it. The author Khalil Gibran, he once said that the deeper that sorrow carves into your being, the more joy you can actually contain. And I love that image. That makes sense to me. Someone who I think of who has great joy, whom I miss dearly from right here at COA, is a woman named Gail Hussey. Does anyone else miss Gail Hussey? I wish you all could have known her because my image of her is of this incredibly skinny but strong little body of this 70-something-year-old woman, she wouldn't tell me, bounding up to the church, having gone for a swim or having gone for a walk in the woods, and she always had in her arms this whimsical toy for one of my children, and she always had a huge smile and a joke, even when she was injured or battling painful cancer. That was her. Not always bounding as much, but always caring as much, always feeling that joy. Who is that person for you, I wonder? If you were to close your eyes and just think of who embodies joy, who is that? Because that alone makes me feel joy, just thinking about that person. And that same preacher, Jonathan Edwards, he also said that when we're trying to see if someone's religion is real, we must look for joy. He says joy is a sign that God is present in someone's life. Do you agree with that? Again, joy, not happiness. Even joy in Inside Out sometimes seemed to have an identity crisis. She forgot who she was or what she really was, and she would become a bit of a control freak, trying to dominate all the other emotions, trying to get them in line so she could be the only one. She would mistake happiness for true joy, just like we do. Joy is not just what feels good in the moment, but it's also what really means something, longer term. Joy is big enough to also hold space for tears. So sadness does not actually have to even be an obstacle for joy. But as I was thinking about this this week, I thought, what does get in the way of us having real joy? Well, I think one barrier might be exhaustion. Do you agree? Exhaustion. Because we are socialized into a rat race, I think. Into a drive towards more and better, and if not perfection, then at least productivity, right? And if we can't achieve that, then we get down on ourselves. We'll talk more about this during the remainder of the summer because our next series is on rest and Sabbath. But all this is to say that it's hard to feel joy when you also feel burnt out and overwhelmed and never good enough. Joy doesn't have a place in all of that. And another barrier to joy is isolation. We were, as a nation, becoming increasingly more isolated even before a global pandemic even before. Research has found that we laugh five times as much when we're with other people as we do alone. If you think about that, isn't that true? Watching a funny movie or in church when something funny happens, we laugh more with each other. We find our greatest joy in moments that sociologists call collective effervescence. I love that. Just think of like joining a line dance, like the cha-cha slide, or screaming in a cheer when you watch pro football and your team gets a goal. I don't relate to that one, but, but I like to dance and have fun. Anything together where you just feel caught up in the moment, we tend to feel more joy in those kinds of moments. But you know, those examples bring up another potential barrier to joy, I think, for me. Us grown-ups are very serious. And many of us are very self-conscious. So if I asked you all right now to make a funny face at someone else in church, I bet some of you would do it. But I bet some of you would not. And you'd go, oh, that's silly. 
We have this unconscious assumption that joy is frivolous or that it's a sign of a lack of intelligence. Kids are joyful, but they won't be for long, right? Not when they learn about all the real problems of the world, right? But maybe not. Maybe not. That never happened to Gail. We don't realize this, but so many of us are confused about the difference between joy and happiness because we have all been indoctrinated into a very different gospel, a gospel of toxic positivity. And we think that that's joy. Toxic positivity is the idea that if we dream it, we can do it, and if we can't do it, we just aren't being positive enough, and we need to try harder, and everything happens for a reason, and good vibes only, right? Do you feel the weight of that gospel sometimes? Because there is no place in that for real joy or for any of our other God-given complex emotions. But here's a question. Isn't good vibes only sort of what Paul was preaching in that Philippians passage? Is that what he was saying, especially in verse 8? Think only about things that are pure and excellent and beautiful. Well, that's easier said than done, right? When you just have the news in the background distracting you from all these true and good and beautiful things. And the thing is, it was not easy for Paul to say. Because when he wrote this, he was in prison, potentially on death row for preaching the gospel where he wasn't supposed to. He had been hearing that all these churches he was planting were falling apart, struggling really badly. So this was not a happy-go-lucky time for him. Paul's joy is like what the theologian Karl Barth calls a continual, defiant, nevertheless. And he writes about it. Nevertheless, in spite of prison, in spite of illness, in spite of death and grief, nevertheless, rejoice in the Lord always. Paul was trying to encourage these beloved friends and leaders with this letter. He knew they were struggling, and I find it remarkable that so much of what he said to do and to think about really echoes modern-day advice for seeking true joy. Because as I told you, people across the world, they study joy and happiness. They do research to find out definitively what helps it and what hurts it. And one example of this is called the Big Joy Project that found that what leads to real, big, lasting joy is just small, everyday things. Little things like experiencing nature every day, or seeing the humor in things, or regularly affirming your values, or celebrating good things happening for other people. We do that every week. Those things are true and lovely and excellent and beautiful, aren't they? And furthermore, those things pure, excellent, trustworthy, commendable, those all describe God. So connecting with God can bring you real joy, more real joy. You are all filling up your joy well right now, more than you think just by being here, in this moment, with us, focused on a God who is honorable and just and beautiful. I want to put up a picture for you all, and I bet some of you will recognize this. I was taught a special form of prayer when I was back in my youth group days, and it stuck with me, though I don't always do it very well. It's called the Acts Prayer, and each letter stands for something. So it's kind of a way to structure your prayers, things to sort of remember to say, to train your mind and heart for how to interact with God. And the A is for adoration, so just, God, you're pretty great. Here's why. Here's what I love about you. C for confession. God, I'm not always very great. And here's why, right? T, thanksgiving. Thank you, God, for such and such, big and small. It doesn't go unnoticed. And S for supplication. So the idea that, hey, God, here is where there are gaps, where there's need, where I don't know what to do. Acts. We usually do this in the complete opposite order, right? starting with what we need, rather than remarking on what is beautiful and wonderful about God. And it's not that that makes God so mad. It's that is human nature for us to start with what we need. But that's not what's going to transform our hearts with joy. This is what will help us to feel more joyful. Life is hard, friends, but it's not hopeless. Psalm 126 that you heard Steve read reminds us that so many of the hard things in life are actually seeds 
that will grow into joy. Maybe not right away, maybe not the way we want it, but do we believe that? That God's work is like seeds growing underground where we cannot see them. I'll tell you what, it's a belief in that, in God's underground work that keeps me going. Seeking joy and living joyfully is actually a spiritual discipline in a world that's on fire, right? With extremism and anger and division and violence. It's a spiritual discipline. It can give us fuel to make the world just a bit better. So what things does our hurting world need in our country or our state or our neighborhood? What things does our world need that are hard for us to do that we would rather someone else take care of? The writer Ross Gay, he says, my hunch is that joy is an ember, an ember for wild and unpredictable and transgressive and unboundaried solidarity. I love that. And all that saying is that joy can unite us with some pretty surprising people, people that we might not otherwise know or love. Joy cannot help but look around at everyone who lives on this planet and respect and repeat God's affirmation of them at creation. It is, you are very good. That's joy. I want to close this time together with silence after a bit of a blessing by Kate Bowler that's called A Blessing for When You Want to Wake Up to Joy. Blessed are you for feeling the pull, that tug back toward a part of yourself so easily ignored, yourself at ease, yourself in the flow, yourself at play. Pain or boredom or business has sucked up all the energy, but wait, aren't you more than a crisis firefighter? Blessed are you when you relax, when you feel young again, when you lay the stress down. You are more than a list of things to do, people to love or problems to survive. You are a big, loud laugh or a quiet study of wonder. May the joy of fun be poured back in your roots and may you watch yourself come back to life. Let's take a moment. Thanks be to God.
Amen. We come now to our time of joys and concerns, and I'm grateful because pretty much every week, along with all the heavy things that we carry, you all do have things to celebrate. Um, I, I know in the hopes and notes this week, um, we left out some of the birthdays and anniversaries, so I wanted to list some of those up to make sure you knew about them, that Joan Henderson's birthday is today. Um, Drew Erlock's was yesterday, and Paula Kilgore's is on the 16th. And as Lisa lifted up last week, she and Dave are celebrating 41 years of marriage also on the 16th this week. Um, one concern I do want to start us off with and make sure I address is that um, no matter how we feel about any particular leader or politician, um, we do pray that people would be protected from violence um, and that this next few months would be one where maybe we're surprised by some peace and civility, right? Lord, hear our prayer. Others, joys and concerns. Jane. Oh. Um, my name was, was in the hospital the other day, so those are the the darkest days of day. Um, <laughs> but um, the good for Jane is that her mom was she's back with a great voice, so she has the four on the Sudan of these two daughters. It's just really fun. Thank you for the show. She can still support the show. But it's just awesome. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. After really nearly a year now of being in the hospital every month, July has been hospital free and we pray that it would continue. Lord, hear our prayer. But we give thanks because Emily is walking with a cane and doing so well and looking so much better. So, and I hope that means you all are getting more rest and quality time also. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Who else did I see? Tom? Um, I'm going to ask our friends in the playground to just keep voices down, okay? Just especially right now because we're talking about some stuff going on with people. But we are praying for you, Tom, that you're going through a current relapse. And it's wearing down on your body, but it's also discouraging for your mind and heart. So we pray for healing, total healing for you from God and support during this time. Lord, hear our prayers. Others? Melinda? We continue prayers for your 94-year-old stepdad, Pete, who is confused and had an infection in a fall and is now on hospice care. And we just pray that he would be free from pain and suffering, that God would be with him in peace. Lord, hear our prayers. Others? Jean. We continue prayers for your wonderful friend, Joy, who absolutely embodies Joy in her cancer journey, even with so much pain and struggle she has. We continue prayers for her. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray traveling mercies and wonderful time with family for you all. You and Jim going to see your son and his family out in Germany for the first time in a year. Praise the Lord. 
And Lord, hear our prayer. Am I missing anyone? Yes, Jacqueline. Um, so I heard some of that. I might need to ask for some repeats. So we're praying for guidance for you. Yes, Jacqueline. In all areas. Yes, absolutely. I can relate. And the second one I did not hear. Unsafe people. Thank you. Thank you. There's so many people we're worried about. Absolutely. And then on November 13th, um, 2023, Oh, your family lost your mom, and so you all are still walking that journey of grief. You And I pray that God will give you peace and togetherness as you walk that journey together. Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you for sharing. Others? All right. Well, let's all take a quiet moment and consider what we would want to offer back to God today. God, we do thank you so much for this fellowship, for this time carved out to seek your joy and your presence. And you know we all come in here today with very different needs. We pray that for the concerns on our hearts that weigh heavy, that you would lighten our load, that you would give us joy in the hope of your presence for ourselves and the people we love. And we pray for all of those around the world who are having trouble finding that joy today. We pray for those concerns named among us and those submitted throughout the week. We pray for uh, Dave Motel as he uh, continues his visits with doctors to determine whether or not he can have surgery on his neck to address his pain. And we pray for her friend Lynn who is back home from after many trips to the hospital. We pray for um, Steve's good friend Keith who is also father-in-law to one of our members, Roz who just suffered a serious heart attack, Lord. We pray ongoing healing and protection for he and his family. We pray for Cindy Root's dear friend, um, Heather, who is experiencing complications after a heart transplant surgery. Lord, be with her, give wisdom to the doctors, bless everyone who loves Heather. And as Diane Ray lifted up so well last week, we pray not only for the division and elections and decisions to come in our country, but for all the changes in countries around the world who are undergoing such transition, like the UK and France, um, we always pray for Cameroon, for our wonderful Winifred Forti, for all places around the world that we know you see and care about, we put them in your hands. And now, God, we pray as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we enter into this time of offering, please join me in prayer. Bountiful God, all that we can offer you stems from your generosity. May the gifts that we return to you become a blessing for your whole community, enriching and empowering us for the work to which you call us. Amen. Would the ushers please come forward.
friends, as you go from this place, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope and go in peace. Amen. Thank you.